Hello, my name is Dr Ewan Sinjin Smith. I'm a fellow in pharmacology at Corpus and I'm a reader in nociception in the Department of Pharmacology within the university. Like many fellows at Corpus, I wear a few different hats. I'm a director of studies in biological natural sciences and I'm a tutor for both undergraduate and graduate students. I also have a rather unusual title, which is I'm the custodian of the Corpus Chronophage Clock. And one of my jobs in this role is to tell all new students about the Corpus Chronophage Clock, a bit of its history, what it does and why it's there. Usually I would do this in person, but this year, for obvious reasons, we're doing it online. So in these two videos, you can see the Corpus Chronophage Clock doing its thing. In case you haven't seen it in reality yet, this is located on the corner of Bennett Street and King's Parade. So let's talk a bit about the history of the clock and what it exactly is. Time can be defined as the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present and future regarded as a whole. And if we go back in time, we can see this building in its old use as a NetWest Bank. So the building itself was built in 1866. It was designed by the architect Horace Francis. It was originally the London County Bank, which then later became the NatWest Bank. And in the early 2000s, Corpus had a bit of a problem, which was that the then undergraduate library was situated underneath the Parker Library. And over time, it just became too small to really provide what a good undergraduate library should have. And at the same time, it also meant there wasn't a dedicated reading room for those wishing to visit and use the Parker Library. So as the lease was running out, uh, the NatWest Bank was asked to move on, which happened in 2005. And that meant that the building could be converted into what is now the Taylor Library. And at the same time, a dedicated reading room could be put in place in the Parker Library. But there was a bit of a problem because this building is a listed building and you couldn't just brick up the door. So what could be done with this old doorway, what was now going to lead into the library? Well, lots of um, suggestions were made to the fellows about what could be done. One involved saying, well, why don't you do what the British Library have done, put up sort of a metal gate with Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi all over it. But this was deemed as rather garish because if you look at the front entrance to Corpus, there's a rather large gate, but there is no name saying Corpus Christi. So to have the name on a side entrance that didn't actually open was deemed rather inappropriate. Moreover, it'd be rather odd being inside a library trying to work and every two minutes trying, someone's trying to shake a gate that doesn't actually open. So that was a no-go. And that's where Dr. John C. Taylor OBE comes in. John Taylor matriculated at Corpus in 1959 and is now an honorary fellow of the college. He's probably best known um, as an inventor and more specifically for inventing the bimetallic thermostat control for the electric kettle. So every time an electric kettle goes ping when it boils, that's his bimetallic thermostat control doing that. But John also has an interest in clocks. And so he said to the college, why not put a clock in that old entrance. But of course, this would be no ordinary clock. Here is John with Professor Stephen Hawking on the day of the Corpus Chronophage Clock's inauguration in 2008. So John designed the clock and it was made by Huxley Bertram Engineering, a local engineering company. This is Bertram and Huxley standing either side of the clock. Now I didn't realize at the time when I became custodian, but actually I've got a very loose connection with the clock which is that Stuart Huxley's father, Andrew Huxley, uh, won the Nobel Prize with Alan Hodgkin for working out how it is that nerves send electrical impulses. And in my lab, our, my research group is interested in understanding how it is that substances that evoke pain initiate an electric, electric signal and send that signal to the central nervous system. So in a very indirect way, I've got a connection with the clock because of my strong affinity for Andrew Huxley, the father of Stuart. So let's look in more detail at the chronophage itself. So chronophage means time eater, and that's exactly what this beast does. It eats time. If you look at the chronophage in the first 30 seconds of any minute, its mouth is shut. But as we enter the 31st second, the mouth lolls open and it stays open until that minute disappears. And at the minute we change time, the mouth snaps shut. That minute is gone, you don't get it again. But the chronophage isn't just there for decoration, it actually functions as what's known as a grasshopper escapement. And this is a development by the horologist John Harrison in the 1700s. And it actually does mean the chronophage has a function. Its legs fit into these gaps in the escape wheel to prevent it whizzing round, and it stabilises the clock. So it functions as a grasshopper escapement and it's critical to the clock actually working as the clock needs to. So you don't tell time with the chronophage using hands, but rather LEDs. There are 2,376 of them. 
The inner circle is the hours, the minutes, and then seconds. And that's how you tell the time, each, quarter being sorry, each hour being divided into quarters. So you tell the time with these LEDs, which is a bit unusual. And usually when clocks hit the hour, they chime with some bells or something. But the chronophage does something a bit different. You'll hear the rustle of chains and a hammer striking against a coffin. Time passes and we all die. Now this might seem rather macabre, but the chronophage is actually a jolly thing at heart. It plays tricks on us, because time is not what we think. What's going on in our lives can dictate how we feel time is passing. So if you're in a particularly dull lecture, then time might pass rather more slowly than it really is. So in this left-hand video, we can see the pendulum ticking, the LEDs going round, and the chronophage rocking doing its thing. The mouth is open at this point because we're, as you can see with this second hand, we're past 30 seconds of that minute. On the right-hand video, we can see the chronophage doing something a bit different. The pendulum slows. The LEDs slow. Everything slows down. What's going on? This is the chronophage playing a trick. And in total, it can play 50 tricks. Some involve the pendulum, some involve the chronophage, some involve lights and some the LEDs and some everything altogether. Of these 50 tricks, there's a special subset which is played on four special days. So it'll randomly play tricks, but on these special days, there is a special set of tricks and they're played more frequently. These four days are New Year's Day, Corpus Christi Day, John Harrison's birthday, which is the 24th of March, and John Taylor's birthday, the 25th of October. So on those four days, you can watch the chronophage and guaranteed you'll see it playing these tricks. But this, of course, means that there's a few problems with the chronophage telling the time. How can it tell the correct time if it's moving around doing these tricks all the time? Well, it doesn't always tell the correct time, but it's usually accurate once every five minutes. And it catches up and slows down because it can run 10% fast and 90% slow. So when it plays these tricks, that's how it corrects itself. And that's also how it copes with adjustments to the clocks going forwards and backwards. In October, when the clocks go back, the chronophage is now running an hour fast. But because it can run 90% slow, it does just that. And within an hour, it's telling the right time again. How do we know that it's doing this correction? Well, if you look at the clock during that period, the hour and minute LEDs will be out, but the second ones still were around. That tells you the chronophage isn't dead, it just knows it's not telling the right time. When the clocks go forwards, the chronophage is posed with a bigger problem because it can only run 10% fast. But it deals with this by taking advantage of the fact that when it hits one of those quarters, it can correct itself, and it does that. It advances the next three quarters to tell almost the right time apart from the fact it's been running fast for 15 minutes. So it will then run 90% slow before it's telling the right time again. And again, that means within about an hour or so, the chronophage is telling us the correct time. So in terms of the uh, face of the chronophage, this is one piece of stainless steel that was formed into these ripples through a series of controlled explosions in a vacuum in an undisclosed location in the Netherlands. And this rippling effect is meant to signify the Big Bang, the event that started time hence Stephen Hawking being there at the inauguration. If we look more closely at the chronophage, we can also see some other details. At the bottom, the pendulum is above this rhodium dish, and this rhodium dish has 10 peaks and troughs. This is because John Harrison, the horologist I mentioned earlier, he of marine chronometer fame, he was able to develop clocks which were accurate within a tenth of a second. And one of the tricks that the chronophage will play is that this pendulum will slow down and count out these tenths of a second in homage, like the grasshopper escapement, to John Harrison. We can also zoom in on the pendulum and observe some writing. We've got J-O-H dot, Sartor, Monan, Inv, and some Roman numerals. So J-O-H is short for Johannes, John, Sartor for Taylor, as in clothing. Monan is short for Monanensis, the Latin for Isle of Man. Inv is short for infinite, the verb for something to bring something to fruition. And the Roman numerals spell out 2008. So John Taylor from the Isle of Man made it in 2008. In case we should ever forget, it tells us itself who made it. Now, like all good clocks, the chronophage has a key. But this is no ordinary key, as this video will now show us. If one is to twist the knob at the end of the tactile shaft, and then looks at the bits, you can see something rather unusual. 
which is that it spells out to us corpus clock and this symbol in the top left hand corner is what a bimetallic thermostat control for an electric kettle looks like. So if you're wandering the streets of Cambridge and you come across this key, you only need to twist that knob and it will tell you that this is the corpus clock key and that it was made by he of bimetallic thermostat control fame, John Taylor. And at college feasts, the key comes out and passes around all the guests. So at that point, I'm going to stop. Um, hopefully that's told you a little bit more about the chronophage than you knew before. And if there's anything else you wish to know, then please do get in touch.